Hello, welcome to Mailbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is Whiskey Review, a very belated whiskey review, number 59. Before I get started, firstly I wanted to apologise and get that out of the way for the amount of time it's actually taken me to post this review. It's been uh, going on two months uh, since I last posted a review, so I do apologise. A couple of reasons for that. Firstly, I've been extremely busy. That is pretty much the only reason. I've been incredibly busy. Uh, got married. Uh, I then went on a honeymoon for three weeks and uh, well that pretty much ties it up really. So every every spare minute of my day was taken up getting ready for this this massive wedding event that passed by in a blink of an eye and cost me a lot of money. <sighs> right, that aside, hello. So uh, good to be back, back to normality. Um, now you'll see straight away I have four bottles of whiskey, specifically American whiskey, and that is because we are fast approaching. Today is the second of July. Uh, we are fast approaching the fourth of July, and in celebration of that, even though I am British, you know, <laughs> the past is the past. Um, I'm going to be reviewing four different uh, American whiskies and bourbons to basically post over the next uh, next week. This this one week, so you're going to get four reviews to make up for all those that I didn't post. Uh, or record. So, what we've got, first one we're going to be looking at today is Buffalo Trace. There it is, we'll get onto that in a moment. I'm also going to look at uh, Maker's Mark, very popular. A Jack Daniels, but it's um, one of the Master Distiller series. Um, I have a friend who is obsessed with Jack Daniels, personally I am not, but we'll see how that one goes. And uh, lastly, I'm going to be looking at uh, the Four Roses single barrel, or one of the Four Roses single barrel releases. So, I'll put those to one side. And when I say that, I mean put them on the floor and hope that I don't knock them over. Um, also, a few of you did comment before I took my leave of absence um, saying that the sound quality and general production quality uh, of these videos is, is to be frank, shit. Uh, which is fair point. The, the audio in particular was terrible. I was using a very small Nikon bridge camera, which was not intended for video recording. So what I have done is I have gone out and purchased a camcorder. So hopefully um, you are now experiencing better audio. If you're not, then, well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm, I'm gonna just do silent reviews instead and I'll just you know, like the old cinemas used to be, black and white, and all the writing comes up at the bottom, and there's music in the background with an organ and a piano, and Charlie Chaplin falls off a ladder, that sort of thing. So, Buffalo Trace is the, the first whiskey that I'm looking at. Very widely available, as you'll see on the back, UK. UK import and taxation stamp duty, so you can get it widely in the UK. I pick this up from Tesco every time I run out. This is a whiskey that I always have in, because I'm very much into my uh, whiskey cocktails and cocktails in general, so I tend to use this to make my old fashions. Now, Buffalo Trace, very popular, very famous, and very well established distillery. That is quite a chunky one for a first review. Let's put a little bit back. There we go, that's more like it. So, this is the standard expression of Buffalo Trace 40%. It's straight bourbon whiskey, it is not but just bourbon, it is straight bourbon whiskey. The Buffalo Trace Distillery is based in the bourbon heartland of Kentucky, and as I say, it's one of the sort of like larger, more popular, and well-established um, distilleries. Buffalo Trace, as well as the standard release, they also have the very sought-after antique collection, which includes things like an 18-year-old Sazerac, George T. Stagg, which you may have heard of, which is incredibly strong and incredibly good, um, and those those bottles get snapped up. Like every year, it's ridiculous how quickly they go and how expensive they are as well. Um, they also produce Blantons, which comes in like a little globe-shaped bottle. It kind of looks like a golf ball, but it's not. It's got a little horse on top. Uh, I've got a bottle of that on the shelf. It's not yet opened. I wanted to get... You'll see that Buffalo Trace, Maker's Mark, you know, that sort of thing, is pretty basic. I wanted to cover some of the more accessible, more common bourbons and, and American whiskies first. I am also going to cover at some part on the blog. I have got a Balcones uh, Brimstone. I have also got uh, Wild Turkey, an old Tur Wild Turkey 101, and Woodford Reserve. But for now, I just wanted to give these four a go. So, before I go on, bottled at 40%. Now, 
Nice colour in the glass there. Now, as we are all American whiskey or bourbon, should I say, in this particular case, uh, this has been matured in new oak casks. So they've never been used before. The bourbon industry, they have to use new casks every time. They cannot reuse casks, which is one of the reasons why you see so many Scotch whiskey distilleries using bourbon casks to mature their whiskey. They're widely available. Somebody's made them already. Why not use them? They impart really nice flavours into Scotch. They're quite affordable. A sherry cask can set you back a lot of money, and I'm talking almost into the thousands now for some of them from certain uh, sherry producers. Uh, whereas bourbon casks are two a penny, not literally, or else you know my house would be full of them. And um, it's just a very positive sort of what, what's the kind of word that I'm looking for? There is a word for it. It's it's basically like they live because someone I can't remember it. Anyway, moving on. So. It's very good for the Scotch whisky industry, but it also means that you can impart a lot of flavour into what is relatively young spirit, and a lot of bourbon is, generally speaking, relatively young. This is no age statement, as with a lot of bourbons and American whiskies you will see. Onto the nose. Initial, very predictably, vanilla. A lot of spice, thinking like cloves, cinnamon. You also got sort of like caramelised pecans, or if for our American viewers, pecans. Pecans, 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 pecans. I'm not going to say it's smoky, but there's kind of like, I've mentioned the, the pecan. And one of a very popular wood to burn and use in, in barbecue, and particularly in sort of like the southern states of America, um, as well as hickory and apple wood, and, and in terms of like Georgia and places like that, peach wood, they also use pecan wood or pecan wood. And I'm sort of getting that little sort of nice, sweet, smouldering kind of note in there as well, alongside all that sweetness. Bourbon, generically, is quite sweet, you know, it's the nature of the beast, you know, a lot of the mash is corn, so it is what it is, it's going to be sweet. Very simple, very straightforward, you've got Demerara sugar again in a pan, so sort of going back to that caramelisation thing, you're not going to find a huge variance in flavour. Um, or particularly in, in nosing bourbon at least, particularly the lower end of the scale such as this, um, you are going to come across a lot of the same sort of notes in varying degrees of strength and sort of subtlety. Um, but you know, it's it's really, really well put together whiskey. Very, very pleasant. Really, it's kind of got this it's very reassuring. This, I don't know why, this really, really makes me feel at home. I love it. Normally, I w I'll be honest, normally I would drink this in a, in a flat tumbler or a crystal glass. I don't usually drink Buffalo Trace in a Glencairn, not because I don't think it deserves it, not by any stretch. I just prefer it having a nice, nice big measure in a big flat tumbler. Sometimes that is just what you need. So, onto the palate. Really nice sweet warmth. I think fresh hot candy floss. Again with the sort of spiciness. Again, predictably, lots of vanilla. But cinnamon, cinnamon buns. A little like raisins in, a bit of the icing on there as well, lending to that sweetness. Quite warm. The finish, do you know what? It's not particularly long, but you are left again with that kind of nice nutty sweet flavour towards the end. It just sort of hangs around a little bit, it resonates alongside that sort of sort of spicy sweet note. Um, and I'll tell you something, I mentioned old fashions before, it really does make a great old fashioned this stuff. Um, I might actually do a piece on cocktails at some point, I don't know if that's of interest, but you know, we, we can see. It's bold at 40%, um, I believe it's natural colour, I think it has to be actually from memory. Chill filtration, couldn't tell you, but 
it retails at between 20 to 25 pounds. If you're paying more than 25 quid for it, don't. Get it from Tesco, it's, I think it's about 22, 23, even when it's not on sale. You will find it on offer quite a lot. Hell, you can pick it up on Amazon for about 20 quid the majority of the time. And you know what? I've said already that I always have it on shelf. One of the reasons for that is it's proper old school bang for buck bourbon whiskey. You, get, you know what you're getting? You're getting good value for money. It's really affordable, very well made. It's made by a reputable and respected bourbon producer who know what they're doing. Makes, as I say, very versatile. It makes great cocktails. It's great to sip on its own. I don't have it with ice personally, except when it's in a cocktail. If you take ice, that is absolutely fine. If that's how you enjoy it, good on you. Going back to the nose then, you do actually get kind of like a little sweet corniness. I know it's not the same, it's not literal sweet corn, you know, they don't make the bourbon with sweet corn, let's, let's get that out of the way. They, um, it's, you kind of get this sort of like charred, buttery, sweet corn, corn on the cob off the barbecue, with a little bit of salt on there. But again, it then does go straight back into that sweet, vanilla, spicy, nutty, woodiness. It's lovely, really, really good. I'm not getting much more than what I've already said on the palette, to be honest with you. I'm not going to say it's one dimensional because it's not. It's just very simple, very well put together, as I've already said. Um, and I think that alongside with the price. And moving on to the score, uh, I'm going to give uh, Buffalo Trace an 84 out of 100. I think it's, again, a very well put together whiskey, very affordable, very accessible, very versatile. Uh, and I think it's a really good bang for your buck. And I do recommend if you don't have it, or if you've never tried it, give it a shot. If you do, do you like your American whiskies? If you like your Jack Daniels, for example, and you want to try and move out a bit from there and something with a bit of a bigger flavour profile, I think it's a really good place to start. So, thanks very much for watching. Again, I hope the sound quality is a lot better this time. And again, apologies for the uh, for my lack of reviewing. Uh, hopefully, see you soon. Cheers.